Behind me is a Lexus LX470, which is a Toyota Land Cruiser in a fancy suit. And since its debut all the way back in 1951, the Land Cruiser has gained a legendary reputation for its reliability and durability. And due to that reputation, the Land Cruiser has become quite possibly the planet's most sought after adventure vehicle. Whether it's delivering humanitarian aid to remote areas, transporting people on safari, or patrolling a nation's rugged borders, when the mission calls for transporting people over harsh terrain through remote areas, it's the Land Cruiser that is called upon to get them there, and even more importantly, bring them back again safely. But what about this one? Is it simply a bastardized luxury version of Toyota's Land Cruiser ruined by Lexus? Or is it one of the greatest adventure vehicles of all time? That is exactly what I'm going to answer in this video. You see, I have owned this Lexus LX470 for the better part of three years, and in that time have put over 30,000 miles on it, exploring off the beaten path all over the Western United States. It has spent countless miles off-road, and it has been our base camp for many adventures. I guess what I'm trying to say is, we have used this vehicle in a way that is befitting the Land Cruiser name. So this review is going to be from the perspective of someone who uses an LX470 for more than just taking the kids to soccer practice or parking up on the curb in front of a Starbucks. All right, and I think it's only fitting that we start the review right here under the hood. This Lexus LX470, and in fact all 100 series Land Cruisers, are powered by a 4.7 liter V8. This is the 2UZFE engine, and this engine is one of the things that makes this vehicle so incredible. And that is because this 4.7 liter V8 is insanely durable and ridiculously reliable and long lasting. In fact, this is the same engine that you will find in older Toyota Tundras that have done over a million miles. So this is an absolutely bulletproof powertrain. And it's one of the things that makes the Toyota Land Cruiser such a legend is the incredible build quality and durability. This engine makes not a lot of horsepower and a decent enough amount of torque, but it always feels like it's unstressed. And I think that's one of the keys to its longevity is that it's never really working all that hard. It doesn't particularly like to rev over about 5,000 RPM. On roads, I would consider the performance to be adequate. Off-road, it performs just fine. Now, I suppose that I should note that later versions of the 100 series Land Cruiser and LX470 did get a little bit of a power increase and also switch over from a four-speed transmission, which this one has, to a five-speed, which definitely modernized the feeling a little bit on the road. Now, while we're outside, I suppose it's worth talking about the styling of the 100 series. And obviously styling is always super subjective, but in my opinion, it does a pretty good job of keeping kind of that classic Land Cruiser look. It's definitely an evolution of the 80 series. Although while the 80 series is absolutely gorgeous, and by the way, was cool enough that Biggie Smalls worked it into a song. Overall though, I think the 100 series is a good looking vehicle. It has aged well, it's pretty simple, and it follows the classic Land Cruiser formula. Definitely an evolution of the 80 series. While it may not be quite as good looking, mostly due to the ridiculous 90s Lexus front end, and it definitely does date this vehicle a little bit. Also, the paint, this has that weird 90s Lexus Toyota tan that was all the rage. I don't know why it was ever popular. Everyone refers to this as old man tan. And all I can say is I hope this color never comes back in fashion. Oh, and one final note while we're outside, you'll see some modifications that have been made. I'm not going to touch on those in this video because I do have an entirely separate video where I covered all of the things we did to this LX470 to build it out as our overland rig. So if you wanna watch that, you can check that out, but not yet. Finish this video first and then you can go watch it at the end and I'll link it later. So don't go anywhere yet. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about the interior of the 100 series Land Cruiser and of course this Lexus LX470. And overall, I have to say, I really like this interior. It is a very comfortable place to spend time. This vehicle comes from an era where luxury meant 
comfortable seats and leather interiors more than it meant electronics and infotainment systems. In fact, that's one of my favorite things about this interior is that it is simple and it is analog. There's not a bunch of screens, there's not a bunch of driver aids, but at the same time, it's modern enough that it is comfortable and you don't really feel like you're missing out on a lot of amenities. And I guess this is probably a pretty good time to talk a little bit about the differences between the Lexus LX470 and the base Toyota Land Cruiser. So a few things that you get when you get an LX470, you do get a little bit more leather in the interior. You get some nice wood on the steering wheel and the trim pieces. This, by the way, is real wood and it's sourced from Yamaha, which is cool, I guess. But anyway, a few other things that separate the LX470 from the 100 Series Land Cruiser. One, and this is a very important one for me, and that is that the LX470 has memory seats. The Land Cruiser did not. And when you're six foot two and your wife is five foot two, this is a very important thing, and perhaps the biggest difference between the Lexus LX470 and a Toyota Land Cruiser has to do with the suspension, and that is because in the Lexus LX470, you get a hydraulically adjustable suspension. It's called AHC, which stands for Automatic Height Control, and with the push of a button, you can lower or raise the suspension as you see fit. This is great for off-road because you can get an instant lift. I believe it's about two inches of additional lift that you can gain by putting it in its highest setting, or you can lower it down. So if you need to load groceries or a dog or something like that, it can make it a little bit easier to do so. Now, this vehicle at 260,000 miles still has the factory AHC suspension, and it is still working very well. That is just a testament to the durability and the build quality of these vehicles. Ask someone with a Land Rover if their 260,000 mile air suspension is still original. And I think we all know the answer. No as far as the rest of the interior up front here and some of the other amenities, the instrument cluster is simple, but it's quite attractive with the floating gauges. Both the driver and the passenger get heated seats. There's automatic climate control, which is another very nice touch. The center console is quite cavernous. You can store a lot of things in here, and we do. All 100 series Land Cruisers and LX470s are full-time four-wheel drive, so there's no switching from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, no buttons for that. You do get a beefy knob to switch from four high into four low as this does have a two-speed transfer case and as we all know a nice chunky knob is just better than a button or a switch on the dash. Also generally I think the materials in the interior are pretty durable. They've held up pretty well. This LX470 has 260,000 miles on it but generally speaking the interior has held up really well. There are a few areas where things have worn particularly the seat bottoms which is super common with these and they do just tend to wear out and rip and I haven't got them reupholstered yet but I'll need to do that in the pretty near future. But overall this is just a very comfortable place to spend time and this is important when we think about this as an adventure vehicle because for us when we are on a trip we're driving states away and so there's days where we are on the freeway for 8 10 12 hours at a time and that's where an interior that's comfortable and quiet like this one is can make all the difference and one other thing i absolutely love about this interior are the low window sills. Now this is something that has pretty much all but disappeared from the automotive industry these days, but the window sills in this vehicle are very low. It's easy to put your elbow out, and when you are off-roading, it's easy to look outside the vehicle and see where your tires are. It's a small thing, but it makes a world of difference, and it's something I love about the 100 Series Land Cruiser. As far as the rear seat goes, the most important thing to note back here probably is that it is plenty spacious enough to accommodate adult passengers back here. So if you need to use this to transport people, this will definitely do that and do that well. The seats are comfortable. There is a center armrest. There are cup holders up in the front here. And this particular LX470 model is even equipped with a dog. All right, and finally, as we come to the back of the 100 Series Land Cruiser, we find perhaps its greatest feature. What am I talking about? I am talking about a proper split folding tailgate. I'm telling you, having had a vehicle now that has a split folding tailgate, I will not buy an SUV that does not have one. It is so handy to be able to drop this and sit here or use it as a workstation or even a cooking surface, all of which 
we do. But other than the split folding tailgate, a few other things to note in the cargo area back here. First is that the LX470 and 100 Series Land Cruiser did come with third row seats. I will tell you they are very small and very cramped and definitely not suitable for adults. But if you do need to carry extra people in your 100 Series, you can do that. Now, obviously we have removed the third row seats here because for us as an adventure rig, we prioritize space. If you do have the third row seats in, they fold up onto the side along the window. So they do rob quite a bit of space. As you can see here, we have added a drawer system. I'm not gonna go in detail on this because I have another video that I will link at the end of this one. If you wanna check out our Overland build and I talk a little bit more about these drawer systems. But the other thing that's really cool about the 100 Series Land Cruiser is that if you fold the rear seats flat, you do have enough room. I have enough room being six foot two to sleep in the back of this. We have fit a queen size air mattress in the back and it is just long enough with the seats folded flat to allow us to do so, which is great if you don't wanna sleep in a tent or the weather is inclement or for some reason you just prefer to sleep in your vehicle. You can do that with this. All right, so now that I have walked you through the LX470 both inside and out, I wanna share with you my driving impressions as well as my ownership experience and what it has been like to live with a 20 year old 260,000 mile LX470. So in order to do that, I think we're gonna take it out on the road because I'm starting to lose feeling in my fingers and I'll share with you my thoughts on that. All right, so let's talk about how the 100 series Land Cruiser drives. This particular one, which is a 2000 model year, makes 230 horsepower and I believe 320 pound feet of torque. And it is fine. It is not quick. Uh, it's not in a particular hurry to go anywhere. This is a heavy vehicle, but it is enough when you're driving on road that you don't feel like you're not able to merge onto the highway or anything like that. In fact, once it gets going, it will happily cruise at 80 or 85 miles an hour on the freeway all day long. And that's really about what you need. As far as braking goes, again, this is a heavy vehicle. I've heard people say that they think the braking on these is great. Um, personally, I don't agree with that. I think the braking is fine at best, but everyone who I know, myself, my wife, and anyone who I've let borrow this vehicle, they, they pretty much always say, man, this thing is like, it takes a little bit to stop. And I think it's just a product of it being such a big and heavy vehicle and not being used to driving something that large, but it is definitely uh, something that you have to be aware of when you're driving one of these. Handling is another thing. I think this is hilarious. For some reason on the forums, I see people all the time who talk about their 100 series Land Cruiser or their LX470 and they say, oh man, this thing handles great, especially with the AHC suspension. And I'll talk more about the AHC suspension in a moment, but they say it handles great. It handles like a Porsche. And I'm here to tell you as someone who's driven Porsches and who owns an old NA Miata, those people are delirious absolutely delirious. The handling is floaty, it is vague, it gets around corners, but if you push it, it will understeer. It does not want to be pushed. It's a big SUV, handling is not the point. And since I just mentioned the AHC, let's talk about that a little bit because that is another thing that really does separate the LX470 from the Toyota Land Cruiser. Now you could get AHC as an option on later Land Cruiser models in the last few years of the production run, but certainly not earlier on. This is a 2000 model year, and this was exclusive to the LX470 at this time. Now it is a huge topic of debate online and on the forums as to whether or not the AHC is something you should keep or whether you should just rip it out and replace it with a more conventional suspension. Some people will say you should rip it out, you should replace it with a more conventional setup and it's gonna be more reliable and less likely to let you down. Well, I don't know that I agree with that. For one, I have 260,000 miles on this suspension and it is still performing flawlessly. You just aren't going to get as comfortable a suspension with an aftermarket setup as you can get with the AHC. This setup is incredibly smooth, incredibly comfortable on pavement. Being able to get an extra couple inches of lift when you need it is, is great. I think it's a great feature. So it does work very well. Another thing that you get with the AHC is adjustable damping. And I've had a lot of vehicles that have that. I've had cars, I even have a motorcycle that has it. And sometimes, honestly, I feel like it's a little bit of a gimmick. What I was really surprised to find 
with this one is that there's a pretty big difference between comfort the softest mode and sport the most firm mode now it certainly doesn't transform this into anything resembling a sports car but it does really firm up the ride so on windy roads it really does help to kind of mitigate the body roll a little bit and i think that it is honestly a net positive again of having ahc in this vehicle so overall big fan and of course equally as important if not more to its on-road driving characteristics is how this drives off-road and how it drives off-road always surprises me every time we get to an obstacle that looks like it's going to be a big challenge or put ourselves in a situation where i'm not sure if this thing will get us through it just doesn't put a foot wrong and it is so capable and so confident inspiring off-road now yes it's not a rock crawler and if you were doing serious wheeling this may not be the right vehicle for you, but for what we use it for, which is really just getting out and exploring the backcountry and getting off the beaten path and maybe you know, some light off-roading forest roads and the things that you tend to encounter on those roads, it handles it just great. Obviously, we've got a few modifications to help with that as well, but this is a tremendously capable off-road vehicle. No, it does not have front or rear lockers. It does have a center locking differential. I mentioned earlier, it is full-time four-wheel drive as well, but this does have a track in fact the 2000 model year lx470 which is what this is this was the first year that toyota introduced a track and so this was the very first vehicle that had a track on it and i'm a big fan of a track i would rather have lockers yes but in absence of that i think a track does a very good job it's a fantastic off-road traction control system one of the best in the business and it's one of the reasons that I sought out a 2000 model year LX470 versus uh, a 98 or a 99, which just had a limited slip rear differential, but no A-Track and no locker. Another thing that has impressed me is just how quiet it is in this cabin. There's not a lot of wind noise. There is a little bit of road noise, which isn't helped by the fact that we added 33 inch tires to this particular truck. But I think the sound insulation in here is very good. I'm not sure if it's better in the LX than it is in the Land Cruiser, but it is nice and quiet, definitely quieter than many other vehicles that I have driven. And so that just goes to add to the level of comfort that you get when you drive this between the comfortable seats a quiet interior and a nice riding suspension it really is a pleasant place to spend a lot of time especially to chew up highway miles and things like that off-road it's also pretty comfortable obviously it has a solid rear axle but it has independent suspension in the front and that combined with the ahc on like forest service roads and roads that aren't too crazy leads to a generally pretty soft and comfortable ride off pavement which is also nice another thing i think is worth highlighting is that there are almost no squeaks or rattles in this interior which which is extra impressive when you consider that again this is 20 years old it has 260,000 miles on it and for the last 30,000 miles we have been using it primarily as an off-road vehicle and so the amount of washboard roads and rough roads and potholes that this has been over and the interior is just screwed together so well that there's still no squeaks and rattles which just again is a testament to the toyota build quality and the build quality of land cruisers in general over the past few months i have rented a handful of vehicles to see if i might want to upgrade to something as this continues to age i've rented a sasquatch ford bronco i've rented a previous generation toyota tundra the one with the v8 and i rented a jeep gladiator and every time i rent one of those and i get back in this i'm just reminded at how solidly built this is it's not built to a price point it's not built plasticky and even after 260,000 miles it still drives like it's brand new and so i find myself coming back to this and thinking you know what it's just worth it for me to continue to maintain my lx and continue to drive it for another hundred thousand miles because I don't see a whole lot in those other vehicles that makes me want to upgrade for how we use the vehicle. And speaking of keeping the vehicle maintained, that's the other area that I want to hit on while we're out driving is the overall ownership experience, the cost of ownership and the maintenance. So first things first, I haven't mentioned gas mileage yet and the gas mileage is atrocious. Uh, it's atrocious. With the 33 inch tires that we have on it, we tend to average somewhere between about 11 and 12 miles per gallon, maybe one or two miles per gallon better than that if we're on the highway. But if you're concerned about gas mileage, this is not the vehicle for you. Let's just get that out of the way right now. In terms of maintenance, this is an area where I think people can get themselves in a little bit of trouble because 
You hear all about the legendary reliability and durability of Toyota in general, and especially of the Toyota Land Cruiser. And that reputation is it's rightfully deserved. But the reality of owning a 20-year-old vehicle with 260,000 miles on it that you're going to use and take off-road is such that you're going to have to spend money maintaining it. And we have had to spend money maintaining this vehicle. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the things that we've had to do to it. I might make a separate video talking about the total cost of ownership. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments below. But I will say that we're probably spending about $2,000 a year in just general maintenance to keep it up to the levels that I want a vehicle to be if we're gonna be taking it out into the back country. So you just need to be aware that there is some maintenance that you do need to do and you do need to keep up on things. And as bulletproof and reliable as this vehicle and this powertrain is, there are parts that wear out. And some of the parts that wear out are a little bit more expensive, probably more expensive than your typical Toyota parts. And so you do need to be aware that if you are going to buy one of these and you do want to maintain it, that there is a certain amount of expense that, that comes with that. All right, and that is the Lexus LX470. You know, a lot of people had asked me to make a video like this, sharing my experience and my overall thoughts on this platform, especially as an adventure vehicle. And I just wanted to wait until I had owned it for a number of years and really felt like I had put it through its paces so that I could give my honest take on this vehicle. And I feel like I have done that now. And so to summarize everything that I have talked about in this video and to summarize my thoughts on the LX470, I will simply say this. I have owned a lot of vehicles, from sports cars to SUVs, motorcycles to hatchbacks. And this vehicle, at 20 years old, with 260,000 miles on it, is hands down the best vehicle I have ever owned. And from the perspective of an overland adventure vehicle, this checks just about all the most important boxes. It is incredibly quiet and comfortable on-road and supremely capable off-road. It's legendary for its reliability and its durability. It is big enough to carry all the people and gear that you will likely need. It can tow, and yet it is small enough to still be able to navigate most trails, especially when things get tighter, as they tend to do here in the Pacific Northwest. And last, but certainly not least, it is a Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh, basically. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, and I want to know what you think. So drop a comment below and let me know if you think the 100 Series Land Cruiser may be the best platform there is for overland adventure travel. And finally, if you want to know more about how we built out this specific LX470 to be our ultimate overland vehicle, then check out this video next where we break down every single change and modification that we made to our LX470 to make it our ultimate off-road and overland adventure rig. Thanks for watching.